All right, so what we're going to work on now is carbon dioxide. Okay, this is carbon, two oxygens, carbon dioxide. I've already written out the um, electron dot formulas for each of these elements, and we want to share electrons in a way that gives the oxygen and carbon all the electrons it wants to be as stable as it can be, and that would be when it has eight electrons in the valence level. The electron dots only show the electrons in the valence level. So we're going to circle these two dots here to share there, and circle these two dots to share these. That brings oxygen up to seven and carbon up to six. If I share two more, like this, then both the carbon and the two oxygens have the eight electrons they want. Okay, so this is the sharing arrangement then. Then the Lewis dot formula, we're going to have the oxygen with um, four dots in between the carbon and the oxygen. One, two, three, four. Four dots over here as well. One, two, three, four. And more electron dots over here. And that's the Lewis dot formula. Okay. That's not Lewis, but Lewis. Okay. Then the Lewis formula, we're going to replace shared pairs of electrons with lines. And since I have four electrons, two mm -hmm. shared pairs, I need two lines between the carbon and the oxygen on both sides. And then I've got the lone pairs over here. Okay, so that's the Lewis formula. Alright, when we get to the three-dimensional shapes then, we're going to go back to the Lewis dot formula and count the sets of electrons around the central atom. And to remind you, sets, lone pairs make up sets, but all the electrons shared between two atoms make up a set as well. well. In this case, we have a set of four electrons shared between these two atoms and four electrons here shared between these two atoms. So that's two sets around carbon. Okay, so we're going to draw carbon here, and we're going to have this set going this way. We want the next set as far apart as we can get it three-dimensionally. Well, what's as far apart as you can get around that central atom? Straight across. Okay. So that's our electron dot formula. What do you think we're going to call this, this shape? Linear. Okay, it's going to be a straight line, so it's a linear electron pair shape. Okay? The next step is to take and replace sets of electrons with the atomic symbols if they are shared. So you're going to redraw the same drawing as before. And then you're going to go up here and look and see which of those sets of electrons from our electron pair shape are shared. And if they're shared, you're going to replace them, the electron dots, with the symbol. In this case, both of these are shared. Both sets of electrons are shared. So we're going to replace both sets with the symbol. Okay? So this is still a straight line, so it's still linear. But we don't have any electron dots left, so this is a molecular shape. Yeah. Okay. It's a molecular shape. Yes, ma'am. Where it came from? The, the four dots here come from these four dots here. Okay, there, there were two pairs of electrons shared between the carbon and oxygen. So I put the two pairs of electrons on this arm. Got it now? Okay. All right, how's that, how's that working for you? <laughs> but we need order multiplication to get started with it kind of see where we're coming to, okay? All right? Okay. 
all four. Now, there are lots and lots of other molecular shapes. But um, in um, CP chemistry, those are the only ones that are essential for you to know. Okay? However, I do want you to get out your text and let's look at some of these other shapes just so you know they're there. Because if you go on and take more chemistry in college, you're going to see a lot more shapes. All right? I just want to introduce you to them. Okay? So with carbon dioxide, we started out with this linear electron pair shape. Okay, now you have to always do your sharing arrangement, Lewis dot formula, Lewis formula, and then you can do your electron pair shape. But this is a general representation of a linear electron pair shape. And from that, we get this linear molecular shape. Okay? Um, in CP chemistry, we don't often see trigonal planar. We did, did see it a while ago when we did the um, formaldehyde. One of the sets of electrons was actually four, not two, as represented here. But you can get more than one kind of shape from this. Okay? The one we got for formaldehyde was trigonal planar. But if you have a lone pair, say one of these four sets was a lone pair, you end up remo removing a lone pair and you get a bent molecular shape. You see what I'm talking about? See how this is just a line that's been bent? Okay. You go to page 143. And this is all the stuff we spent our time on yesterday, doing the um, starting with the tetrahedral electron pair shape. And by doing this process, you get tetrahedral molecular shapes, trigonal pyramidal, bent molecular shapes. You get all these different kind of shapes starting with an electron arrangement like this. Okay? And then page 140. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have another page on this because in, in CP I just cut that out. That's as far as we need to go with CP. All right? So the step-by-step -step process is going to be the same for finding molecular shapes. Start with the sharing arrangement, Lewis dot formula, Lewis formula. Do the electron pair shape, starting with your Lewis dot formula. And then the next step can be either a modified electron pair shape or a molecular shape, depending on whether they're, whether they're alone pairs or not. But if the goal is to eventually get down to molecular shape. If you will follow this step-by-step -step process, you should always get the correct answer. Okay? If you leave out steps and try to take shortcuts... I've seen it happen over and over again. Students that take shortcuts will end up getting the wrong answer. Okay? So if you'll follow the step-by-step -step process, you'll be able to uh, figure out molecular shapes. Okay?